Well, the Super Auto is about ready to go back on the road today, but we've got about a hundred new electronic systems that we need to test out, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and as always I want to thank all the new subscribers out there and all the people that are taking the time to comment. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button, ring that bell so you get notified of new content. Make sure and check out our websites. we got two. We've got GoatRopeGarage.com, that's your home for all the merch. Uh, the tuning assistance, you can reach the Patreon through there. If you have any questions about tuning, it gives you email access directly to me. And then, of course, we have Tuning101.com that will take you right to our YouTube homepage where you find all the playlists with over a hundred videos on tuning, performance modifications, and just things like that. So make sure to check that out. That's an easy link to share with other people, tuning101.com. So we have got the engine in most, uh, probably about 99% of the stuff's done. In fact, I got three wires hanging out over here for the nitrous system that I need to button up. But other than that, this thing is ready to go. We're just waiting on that stinking torque converter. Come on guys, figure it out. Get the torque converters out quickly. Should be shipping this week. But the motor, as far as that goes, is ready to go. Everything's wired up, hooked back up. Uh, I've got to finish a couple things on the intake ducting, but I wanted to test out some of the new electrical systems because we've added so many things. Specifically, we added the Stabilitrack ABS uh, traction control disabling switch. I did a video on that earlier. I'll throw a link up in the corner so you can see me using the GM upfitter switches for that. Uh, we've added the Lingen filter two-step box over there in the corner. It is also tied into the Nitrous, so we can send a command from the Nitrous Express Maximizer 5 to the Lingen filter to retard timing without having to make tuning adjustments. So if we want to change jets on the fly, I can quickly adjust timing across the curve anytime that the Maximizer 5 is powered up. So make sure and check out Nitrous Express for things like the Maximizer 5 and other awesome Nitrous kits. You can see we are running the LT1 slash LT4. I can't remember. This is probably the LT4 plate because this is an LT4 throttle body. The LT4 plate uh, wet kit right now. Uh, on top of that, we also added in the uh, EGTs to all eight cylinders. We were monitoring two cylinders beforehand. Now we're monitoring eight. Uh, I still have to get the CAN bus terminated on that because it will be going back to our micro squirt uh, auxiliary fuel injection controller and data logger. That way we can data log our EGTs for all the cylinders, see what's going on, see if we're having particular issues in one cylinder or another. But the big things that I kind of want to test out today is the electrical switches that enable and disable things like the uh, two-step, the line lock, uh, the maximizer five, and what else? Oh, the ABS, uh, Stability track delete. I'm going to do something a little bit different for this episode. So let me know if you guys like it, dislike it, hate it. I'm actually going to strap a GoPro on my head so you can see what I'm seeing as I'm going through these test outs. Okay, you guys get to see exactly how messy the shop is right now. I've got so much going on over here. Got the oil priming set up. I got the flex plate still to install. I'm going to be doing a video on swapping out the rear main sill. I've seen so many videos out there that are just not good because they tell you remove the rear cover. That's about the worst way you could do it. Intake stuff over here, transmission stuff over here. I probably should have moved the Jeep out. See if I can get this stuff scooted out of the way. Okay. Got the battery hooked back up. Let's jump in here. And there's our upfitter switches there. We turn our power on. Our uh, intercooler pump's running. So here's our big one here. Let me dismiss all the airs because it's going to be pretty mad about a bunch of this stuff because the transmission's not in. Okay, trash control on. If I hit the traction disable button, boom, ABS error comes up. That means we're good to go. Hit it again, ABS error goes right away. Uh, next thing that we need to check is the two-step. Let me go ahead and pull the fuse on the air-to-water intercooler so that this pump's just not running the whole time. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't have a fuse in the AGT EGTs. It's like, why is the EGTs got a pop fuse? Okay, so next one is our Nitrous Express. We look back in here. 
the maximizer five back there, there's a light in the number five that turns green whenever it's active. Okay. There we go. There's the light for the maximizer five. It's good to go. We'll test out the inhibit here in a second. And finally, our line lock. I heard the relay, but we won't know if the line lock works until I hit the button. So, yep, I hear the line lock relay clicking on and off. So the line lock's working. Let's turn that off again. We'll hit that button, make sure. Okay, no clicking. So that's good. And I wish I had longer arms. So I've got to figure out why. It's almost like that switch is bad because I heard the relay click off there. The light is still powered for the two-step, but the two-step is wired up where the activation switch from the push button goes through the relay. So the two-step's always powered up. Okay, I'm gonna hit the button with the switch off. The activation light should not come on. Okay, our two steps activated, so now the activation light should come on. There, yep, I see it, I see it flashing green. No flash, okay. Yeah, there's just this, this switch is a little bit touchy. Oh, I might have to, I have to do something about that. Okay, so the switch is just a little bit touchy on the two step. I might have to order another switch panel. The nice thing about it is it will plug in. I really want it to work like all these other ones. Just quick push of the button. But. Who knows? I hear the relay clicking. It's the switch itself is not latching for some reason. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Well, time to get a replacement coming. That sucks, but not the end of the world. Okay, the other thing I wanted to test out was the inhibit on the Nitrous Express Maximizer 5. So I've got to dig up my cable. Here we go, here we go. We'll plug into that. We'll go live on the Maximizer 5. I've got a video on this, uh, going through the settings, getting this stuff set up. I'll throw a link up in the corner for you if you want to go back and watch how I kind of set some of these settings up. The idea is when the Maximizer 5 is active, it is on, ready to shoot, ready to spray. And then whenever you hit the steering wheel button, it is then disabled. So basically while we're on the line and we are staged with our line lock on and our two-step, the nitrous is disabled. Now once we release the button, everything's going to take off and we're going to be hot to trot. Okay, so we've got our controller. It shows that we're on tune one right now. Let's display the data window and it says we're armed on number one. If I hit this button, it should disarm it. Okay, there we go. Not armed. Perfect. So whenever we launch, as soon as we let go, boom, we're getting the nitrous. Okay, so the nitrous works. Now, as I said, the nitrous switch, whenever that's off, it shuts the whole controller down. So whenever that thing's toggled off, we don't have to worry about it. So that is pretty much it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We've tested out all the different parts of our electrical system, the line lock, the two-step, the nitrous controller, 
uh, I can't even remember the last one. I got too many. Oh, the analog brake disabled, traction control disabled, things like that. Other than our switch acting up, I'm going to go ahead and order another one. Hopefully that solves it. Literally, it'll just be pulling it out, unplugging it, and plugging the new one back in. It's very weird because whenever you hit the, the switch, you can hear the relay. It's just not latching in like it's supposed to be. So it's probably in the switch itself. That thing's been sitting around for about four years now. It's been rolling around, getting thrown everywhere. It's been very low on the priority list until this happened. I was like, oh man, this would be perfect for setting all these different things up. As I said, the cool thing about it is by having those different switches, we can choose what we're using at different times. So whenever we are going up to do the burnout, we can enable just the line lock, hold the button down, and it'll allow us to line lock the front wheels, do our burnout without any brakes on the rear. Then whenever we go up to stage, we can turn on the nitrous and the two-step. Whenever the button's being held down, the two-step's active, the line lock's active, and the nitrous is deactivated. As soon as we let go of the button, well, then we get to full RPM. We start injecting nitrous and the brakes release, so we should take off like a bat out of hell. Whether or not it all works out perfectly, who knows? I mean, there's a lot going on underneath the hood. We've only added more complications whenever it comes time to tune, things like that. But it's, once it all comes together, it is going to be one crazy setup. And if you're interested in kind of keeping up, I'm on Instagram, Goat Rope Garage. Find me over there. I'm doing a lot of this. I'm taking a lot of pictures as I do these different steps, things like that. So it's a good way to follow me whenever I'm not putting videos out quite as often. Now, as soon as the torque converter comes in, we are going headlong into tuning. It's going to, we're going to knock out as much tuning as quick as possible. I'm ready to get this thing back on the track, get some passes out underneath its belt, and then we'll also try and get it down to the dyno here soon once we get the tune done so we can see what kind of power we are shooting for four digits on this thing there is no reason that we should not be able to make it with the built bottom end uh the f1a nitrous everything else we've got an air to water intercooler that i put in with the uh bosch pump on there i've got the cell in the back uh, so we can throw ice in there whenever we're at the track we've got a lot going on but we've got a lot that's going to benefit us for making exceedingly high amounts of horsepower to motivate this thing down the road. It's going to be awesome. So I got to get back to work. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, always be tuning.